Hello everybody, this is Chester with Nexstar and I'm going to review some of the basic hardware and basic manual injection guns. We're going to start with our basic tool. This thing is pretty straightforward. Good the release. This fits a standard 300 by 300 mil uh, cartridge. Now keep in mind, if you've ordered a stitch kit or anything that uses a two to one ratio, on the back, right here, is a piston. That changes this piston here. It allows you to do a two to one ratio. Straightforward, this gun is not spring loaded. It's great for either floor repairs uh, or any of you know, if you've got a crack injection job that's 20 feet or less, this will do the job and do it well. Our next gun, we have it in two formats. This is our heavy duty um, injection gun. As you can see, it's built quite a bit heavier duty. It has uh, three other piston sizes that you can change the ratio. The disc, snap disc, comes off. You can change the size. You just line up the two arrows. Now, this gun, you can also get it from us with a spring load. Now, when it's, you're, you're doing, uh, let's say, 20 or 30 feet at a time, you'll find that by hand pumping it, your arm might get sore, but it's more effective if you've got a spring-loaded gun. This nut here, will extend in approximately a quarter of an inch, then it's at maximum pressure. That way the gun, the spring pressure, is doing the injection. The minute it touches the plate, you can pump it back up to pressure. Our next gun is the Jake gun. And it's mainly sold by Emicol. This is the original spring-loaded gun. Now this one uh, only has two sizes that it can do. It can do 300 by 300 or 300 by 150. This is the second piston here. You've got to use a screwdriver, undo the screw, take it off to change it. It has the same procedure. When it's pumped under pressure, back here, this last, um, you'll see a groove in there. It will extend in approximately a quarter of an inch. That means it's at maximum pressure. Now both the uh, Nexstar spring-loaded and the Emicol spring-loaded are great for contractors or people that think they might be doing lots of continuous injection work. Now the next thing we'll move on to is the basic uh, injection plastic hardware. So here we go. This is the basic injection plastic hardware. To start off with, here's a standard injection port. These are epoxy pasted on over above the crack approximately every eight inches. Uh, now it's important to notice not to plug the uh, port hole going toward the wall. These are pretty straightforward. Any flat surface, you can bend the tabs a little bit. You can heat them up, bend them a little bit more. Now when a person is injecting, this is a mixer, inject straight in or you can add a feed hose and then of course the uh, mixer would twist into this part of the feed hose. Now we have a corner port. These are designed so that they fit into a 90 degree corner. Now if you have a wet wall we have a method now of using uh, KD2 Blitz powder. It's a super fast setting concrete. You can drill a 5 8 inch hole. If you warm these up in water and bend the tabs back, this will pound snugly into that 5 8 hole. It only has to be an inch deep uh, and stay there all on its own. And then it's easier to seal around it either with a paste, hydraulic cement, or the KD2 Blitz. Now, other hardware that we have, this is the retaining nuts. They fit over all of the standard mixers. This is an auto injector. These are very similar to the rest, but 
a different method. It's not using an injection gun. This port is pasted on the wall, very similar. Your product is mixed up, sucked up into the cartridge. The cartridge is put in place on the wall with the product in it. And then these elastics are put on, both of them. And that will maintain 40 pounds pressure without a problem. Uh, the advantage of these is if you're fixing snap ties, pin holes, you don't need an injection gun. You can put the product in, put these on, and basically walk away. Now we uh, will cover some of the basic how mixers work. So here we go with mixers. Everybody's kind of wondered what's the difference between mixers. These things are called static mixers and they're rated by the size and how many elements are inside. So for general rule of thumb, if it's a polyurethane, you don't need to mix it any more than 24 times. If you're mixing an epoxy, you need to mix at least 30 to 32 times to make sure that it's mixed correctly. So if you have um, a low viscosity epoxy and a medium viscosity and a high viscosity epoxy, they technically could all go through the largest mixer without a problem. So how these are rated is, for example, this one here is a quarter inch by 20, so it's one quarter by 24. So it's quarter inch diameter, 24 elements inside. An epoxy one similar, this is a quarter inch again, 32 element, so it's an epoxy one. And especially one for E55, it's a uh, uh, polyurea. This is a 3 16 by 48 element. This is a 3 8 by 24 element. And it can also be used for um, some of the epoxy 101 paste, the injectable paste, simply because it takes a fair amount of pressure uh, otherwise to get it through. Here's a half inch by 30 element mixer. And here is another half inch by 32 element mixer. A little bit different arrangement, so it's much bigger. And this is a Saltzer specialty mixer. These require a special nut. These are used for products like Matchcrete Clear, uh, E555. Uh, any of the products that require uh, a high rate of precision mixing to make sure that the, uh, you're not wasting product and that it's mixed well. Now the other thing that you need to know about is there's flow restrictors and what a flow restrictor is when you have a cartridge and you've got a particular product and it's going through the mixer in the end here it's possible for the A side to get into the B side and possibly contaminate the cartridge. So in a case where you don't think you're going to use the whole cartridge for some of our products they come with a flow restrictor and I'll show you a minute how to install it and then for products like Matchcrete 10-minute mender or E555, it's an even more restrictive uh, flow restrictor. So how the flow restrictors would install, I'll take this one here for example, there's A and B side, I put this on, I take my nut, kind of hard to show it an angle here, I can put my I now have my flow restrictor in there and it will prevent side A from contaminating side B. When I'm done, I can simply take it off and you would want to dispose a little bit into the garbage that's still in there and then recap it. Now it's quite common with polyurethanes, if you don't think you're going to use the whole cartridge, use a flow restrictor. If you don't use a flow restrictor, what you can do is when you get near the end, let's say you have half a tube left, you can pump out you know, a quarter inch worth of product into the garbage to make sure that the two sides are not contaminated anymore. And then basically recap the cartridge. And away you go. Types of ports. Now this is the standard surface port. Now the corner port is the same as this. But this shaft height here may interfere if you're working behind, let's say, a hot water tank or a furnace where there's actually no room to work on it. We now have these extra low profile ports. 
Now, the difference with these though, they require a feed hose. So you would paste this to the wall as normal. And then of course a feed hose would be put on here. And of course now it could easily fit behind an area in a tight area. And of course the plug after is small. Now you can also use a standard uh, mixer to directly inject into them. There's an extension and of course if we take a mixer here we go straight in the end uh, directly on and of course you can take this off and move it to the next port if you want it. Now if you don't have the uh, standard factory feed hose you can also use this piece here. Okay of course again this is a quarter inch ID 3 8 OD hose it slips on like this and of course we can put this in like go do the injection so here we are as one of the things that causes the most confusion with people is regarding feed hoses I'm going to show you how to install a feed hose first off slide the nut over the mixer the wide end of the feed hose uh, people think it goes on the port but no this is where the mixer goes in and you got to push in fairly hard and twist just slightly and it'll snap in place. Now it's basically ready to go. If your cartridge is standing up and open, you can simply put your mixer on. Now if you've got a spring-loaded gun, or even not, um, this is extremely handy because now you could have your injection gun sitting on a ladder or a box or a stool you can put this directly into a port on the wall if you've got a port this fits snug you can do the injection and if your injection gun is still pressured up you can use this stop to stop the flow disconnect this and the pressure can stay in the hose you can move on to the next port and of course after you've done that port and it's come out the next one you simply cap the port now you can also use um, these feed hoses with an auto injector. These will fit in here snug, same sort of thing. Uh, the only thing is that these don't have a lid for them. A lot of times people will just put the auto injector syringe back on, uh, used up, and just put the elastics on so it's you know everything keeps and stays in the wall. So the other thing to keep in mind is. Feed hoses should only be used for with low viscosity products, in other words, thin products. So you're going to use it with the 102 polyurethane, the Coster, the uh, ultra low viscosity epoxy number four, uh, medium viscosity. But we don't recommend or support the use of these feed hoses with any of the thicker products. Simply, it requires too much pressure to make it through this hose. You'll simply just a waste product and it won't come out the other end because it requires too much pressure. So that's it with the feed hoses. Now if by chance you don't have a feed hose and uh, you need to complete a job and you've got, you're going well how can I make this happen? So here's kind of a home brew feed hose. This is your standard mixer, nut. Now this is quarter inch uh, vinyl hose, 3 8 uh, quarter inch ID 3 8 OD it happens to fit nicely directly into the ports of course you don't have a shutoff valve but if you've got a, a location that you can't get at and you need to make uh, a feed hose this particular vinyl tubing is available pretty well at any hardware store um, it will get the job done okay here is just a short review of some of the products for example, this is a 102 Nexstar 102 polyurethane. As you can see, the ends, the piston sizes are the same. Here's our number four, ultra low viscosity epoxy. You can see it's, it's quite viscous. And you can see that it's a two to one ratio. So that's where we need to change the piston. And then here, for example, is a Fortress 4000 epoxy. It's a paste. So, for example, with this one here, we would use our standard 24 element mixer. This one being an epoxy, we would use our uh, 32 element mixer. Now, when it comes to 
pastes. We have the fortress paste, we have the 101 paste. If it's thick, there's no way you're going to get it through a small mixer. You've got to use minimum a 3 8 inch uh, diameter mixer or larger, 3 8 half inch. It's important that you warm the cartridges. Uh, sometimes one minute in the microwave, but realistically, the best bet is a, a pail of hot water. Put it in till it's hot. This will be much easier to dispense. Uh, the same thing applies to the HV and the EHV epoxy. Now, the medium viscosity epoxy wall injection, if you heat it up, it's just as thin as the low viscosity. The other epoxies you don't necessarily need to heat. Um, but it's important with these pastes uh, that if you don't heat them, you're not going to get them through the mixer. And I think if you watch our other video regarding uh, grid stitches, we show an example of what happens if you don't heat it up. It'll only make it partially the way through the uh, mixer. So the next thing we're going to show you is a packer. And what a packer is is a different process, but I'd like to show you some of the basic hardware. This is where this is drilled in to a wall. In this case, it's a half inch, so a half inch hole. You would go halfway through the wall at an angle to intercept a crack. This is where you would use a high pressure pump or a modified grease gun. Same chemicals, you would use a polyurethane to inject it under high pressure. Uh, later on, I'll be doing another video regarding uh, high pressure, but this is just an example of some of the hardware that's used for a uh, crack injection as well. Thank you.